Let's consider example one here then. Find the derivative of the function y equals x squared. Actually, I'm going to change this to, so we're talking the same notation, to f of x equals x squared. So what I want us to find then is the derivative, not at a specific point, but in general. In general. So f prime of x, that's one of our notations for the derivative, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So we need to find two things. We need to find f of x plus h, and we need to know what f of x is. How do we find f of x plus h? That's right. We take x plus h and substitute it in for x in our function. So f of, f of x is x squared, so f of x plus h would be x plus h squared, which when you foil it out gives you x squared plus 2x h plus h squared. And then, of course, f of x, we're told what that is. That's just x squared. So now, the limit as x, h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, which is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus f of x, which is x squared all over h. And now our problem is, is to somehow get rid of that h in the denominator. Well, hopefully we can tidy stuff up in the numerator. I see quite nicely that these x squares will cancel out. So 2xh plus h all divided by h, oops, x, h squared there, sorry. And now both of my terms in my numerator have h in them, so I can divide them both by h to get 2x plus h. And now, oh, now when I let h equals 0, I get... 2x. So f prime of x equals 2x. So now that we know that f prime of x, that's the derivative, which is the slope of the tangent, is equal to 2x, this is the power of calculus and what we just did. We now have a formula that will tell us the slope of the tangent line for any point on our parabola y equals x squared at any x value you want. So remember way back here, where was it? Right here, we found out that the slope of the tangent line at 1 was 2, when x is 1. Here's our formula for it right here. So I want to know what's the slope when x is 1, 2 times 1, 2. What if I want to know what the slope of the tangent line to the graph y equals x squared is when x is 10? What would the slope be? 20. 2 times 10, 20. What's the slope of the tangent line of that curve when x is minus 3? 2 times minus 3 is negative 6. So this formula is a formula that tells us the slope of the tangent line at any x point or any x value. Just stick your x value in there. And you now have the slope of the tangent line at any point on the curve y equals x squared. Let's find the slope of the tangent line to the curve y equals x squared minus x at x equals 3. So I'm just going to find the general formula first. And then at the end, I'm just going to replace the x value with 3. And then I'll know what the slope of the tangent line is. So again, f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And I need to know what is f of x plus h, and I need to know what is f of x. Well, to find, again, let's replace this y value with f of x. So if I want to find f of x plus h, I need to take x plus h and dump it here and here. 
So I'd get x plus h squared minus bracket x plus h. One of the biggest problems I see are students who make mistakes with their signs. So x plus h squared minus bracket x plus h. We're going to subtract all of that. And so when I square this out, I'm going to get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x minus h. And then I'm going to tidy this up. Actually, there's nothing that tidies up, is there? x squared plus 2xh. There's no like terms here. Okay. So that's f of x plus h. And then obviously f of x is just x squared minus x. So substituting those values in, f of x plus h, which is right here, is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x minus h minus f of x. So be very careful to make sure that you have all this stuff in brackets. f of x plus h is all of this stuff. Subtract f of x, which is all of this stuff here. Now we need to tidy up our numerator. So the limit as h approaches 0. Now here I'm going to see we got, well, let's get rid of the brackets. Let's do this first. So x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x minus h. Now be careful here because this negative needs to go into both of these terms. So this will become minus x squared and minus a minus x, which is plus x. Like I say, most people make mistakes in their signs when they're working this, the numerator out because the numerator can get pretty messy. And you got a complicated function. This one's pretty complicated in itself. Now we can, should be able to hack some stuff out here. So x squared minus x squared disappears, and minus x and plus x would disappear. So we'd have 2xh plus h squared minus h divided by h. And as usual, we are hoping that somehow we can get rid of the h in the denominator, and it looks like we'll be able to do this. The first term divided by h is just 2x. The second term divided by h is h. And the third term divided by h is minus 1. And now finally, when we let h approach 0, we get 2x plus 0. So that's gone, minus 1. So the slope of the tangent line is... 2x minus 1, and we wanted to know what is the slope when x is 3. So f prime, the slope at 3. Simply put 3 in for x in our slope formula. That's 6 minus 1. The slope of the tangent line at x equals 3 is 5. So looking at example three, this one here wants us to find the actual equation of the line that's tangent to the curve at x equal eight. So remember, to find the equation of a line, there's sort of two formulas that we can use. One of them is this one, y equals mx plus b. You're familiar with that formula. What does m represent? slope. And what's B represent? Some, right? The y-intercept. The problem with that formula, though, is when we're working with derivatives, and that'll give us the slope, so the M's fantastic, but we often don't have the y-intercept as our point. For instance, here I've told you the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate is 8. What would be the y-coordinate here in this function? If we put 8 in for x, we get 3, right? So we will take the derivative, and that'll tell us the slope. But the point that we have is certainly not the y-intercept. So this formula here, which is simply our slope formula, okay, if, if I know the slope, and I know these other y values, I have a y naught and I have an x naught. This would be x naught, and this would be y naught, my sample point. 
then if I go to isolate this formula for y, I can have a new formula for an equation of a line that looks like this. This is just multiplying both sides by the denominator, x minus x naught. And we would get this. This formula here is, therefore, also the equation of a line. And it's called the point-slope formula. So this formula here is the one that you've been used to using in Math 10. It works well for slopes and y-intercepts. But this formula here is used a lot more in calculus work because it works well. We will know the slope m, and we will have an x naught y naught that being our point. Okay, so you might want to be familiar with using that formula. Certainly, it'll be a lot easier than having to calculate what the y-intercept is. All right, so let's uh, let's give this one a go. So we would need to find the derivative of this function because that's going to tell us the slope. So the derivative is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So we need to figure out a couple of things here. What is f of x? Whoops. Well, let's do that one first then. f of x would be, obviously, that's given to us, the square root of x plus 1. What would f of x plus h be as an expression? So f of x plus h means put x plus h in for all x values. That's what it means. So f of x plus h will equal, let's try this again, the square root of x plus h, because that's what x is there. There's an x plus 1. Yes, so now in our formula, we've got all the stuff we need to know. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, which is the square root of x plus h plus 1 minus f of x, which we said was the square root of x plus 1, all over h. Now we would try to substitute 0 in for h, and of course we get a big mess. We get 0 over 0, which tells us absolutely nothing. So what are we going to do to this expression to try to manipulate it somehow so that we can take the limit? Yeah, let's try the conjugate. The conjugate's a fantastic trick to somehow <coughs> eliminate problems when we have radicals. So I'm going to do that. The limit as h approaches 0. This is my numerator. Root x plus h plus 1 minus root x plus 1. My denominator is h. Remember, the conjugate is the exact same thing as what your binomial was before, but with the opposite sign in between the two terms. So this was root x plus h plus 1 minus root x plus 1. This will now be the conjugate root x plus h plus 1 plus. So the signs in between the two terms have changed. Not the signs in the individual terms themselves, just the sign in between. And of course, what I do to the numerator, I need to also do to the denominator. And it's looking messy as all get out. Well, that's all right. Things are going to simplify nicely for us here. So now, when I FOIL this out, multiply these two binomials out, the square root of x plus h plus 1 times the square root of x plus h plus 1 is just x plus h plus 1. So that's simplified nicely. Then when I multiply this one times this one, I'm going to get plus root x plus h plus 1 times root x plus 1. Well, that's kind of messy. But then I've got this one times this one, and that's just going to be minus root x plus h plus 1 times root x plus 1. And finally, minus root x plus 1 times a positive root x plus 1 is minus bracket x plus 1. Because <coughs> when I square those two terms, that'll eliminate the square root sign. All over 
the h times x plus h plus 1 plus root x plus 1. And just simplifying the numerator, we can see now that these two terms here are going to cancel out, and we will have, oops, limit as h approaches 0 that thing, of x plus h plus 1 minus, now this minus sign needs to go into both these terms, so minus x and minus 1, all over h root x plus h plus 1 plus root x plus 1. I haven't done anything to the denominator yet. And so now just tidying the numerator up a bit more, x plus h plus 1 minus x minus 1, these will cancel out and these will cancel out. And we have worked our magic. And we can now get rid of that nasty h in the denominator. Because the h in the denominator will cancel with the h in the numerator. And we would get 1 over the square root of x plus h plus 1 plus root x plus 1. And we can now substitute 0 in for h. And we get 1 over root x plus 1 plus another x plus 1, which would be 1 over 2 root x plus 1. All right, we're up a bit more here. Whew, I've run out of room. So what we've now found is that the slope of the tangent line to that graph is given by this expression here. Okay, so way back up here, where are we? This was our equation. If you want to find the slope anywhere on that curve, this is your formula right there. And we wanted to find the slope when uh, x was 8. So we would say f prime of 8. The slope of the tangent line when x is 8 would be given by this, putting in 8 for x, which is 1 over 2 root 9, which is 1 over 2 times 3. The slope is 1 6. So we now know that the slope of the tangent line to that curve when x is 8 is 1 sixth. And now that we have the slope, we also had the point. Was it not 8, 3? Sorry, I'm just going to go back up here. Yes, it was 8, 3. And so y minus y naught equals slope x minus x naught. And we will simply enter in our values. The y value there was 3. The slope we said was 1 sixth. And our x value of our point was 8. So this would be the equation of the line that is tangent to that curve at the point x equals 8. <coughs>